Okay, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, to God who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. And so to Him be honored. And so the bottom line is we're going to honor God. But we're going to find in the Word of God that when we honor God, and this is only part of a study, but as we honor God, we're going to honor God through people that God has placed us under as a disciple. It's the only way to truly honor God. You'll find that even in giving in a moment. John 12, 26. If anyone serves me, let him follow me and where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my Father will honor. Notice that. Jesus said, if anybody serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, that my servant will be there. Anyone that serves me, my Father is going to honor. And so, and we're going to read in a little bit, but remember Jesus said, uh, uh, follow me, I'm going to make you fishers of men. Uh, his words are things like, follow me. We see people like the rich young ruler that came to Jesus. Jesus went right to the joker vein, so to speak. And money was his God. And, and um, Jesus didn't tell anybody else, sell everything you give, have, give it away to the poor and come follow me. But that man, he did. Because he knew that was his the man's God. Jesus went right to the jugger vein. And the rich young ruler went away sorrowful because he was not ready to follow Jesus. And so the, the thing about follow, when you think about it, a lot of people say, well, I'm going to serve God, but I don't follow anybody. Well, I'll tell you, you're not following Him because He was the flesh on earth. And He ordained that the whole thing, the whole program set up that He set up on earth would be the same way. That he's going to connect us to the flesh. That's why children uh, have parents. It's the same principle of God. You know, some people say, well, I don't need a pastor. I'm just floating around. Well, convince me children don't need parents. And you'll convince me that people don't need pastors or apostles or whatever. So, in Proverbs 3.16, Length of days is in her right hand, and her left hand riches and honor. And it was speaking about wisdom. But when you have wisdom, you'll begin, begin to make the right decisions. And because of that, riches and honor is going to go. Now, I have some things on finances that we'll be releasing more and more. I mentioned some the other day about it. But I have some deep stuff we haven't even touched yet that I've never even ministered. But we're going to begin to measure this and see what the Word of God really says and release for the work of God worldwide. To me, finances mean another trip overseas. Uh, when I'm overseas, another trip out to the provinces. A lot of people don't realize that every time I go out to the province from like Phnom Penh and Cambodia, it usually costs anywhere from $110 to $140 per day per trip to go out. And a lot of people don't realize this. And, but to me, more funds means more trips. Even when I'm already in the, a nation in Asia, that means more trips out. I can go out further. Last, last time in Vietnam, I brought people in from all over the country, pay, paid their way in, their transportation, their food, their lodging, everything, to train them and send preachers out with a revelation like they never had before. But to me, it's worth it. Amen. I just spoke a while ago about Pastor Maldonado in Africa right now. Uh, he paid the way for many, many pastors to their transportation, their, their, their hotel, their food, everything, to come in from many nations of Africa and hear the word and be imported to, to go forth. He did that last year, and nations begin to explode for God. Churches, a whole area begin to explode because of the anointing that was imported. And so he's doing that because there's men that could not get there. Just like us in Asia, we go out in the jungles where a lot of people would never go. We go places they don't go. And, you know, thank God for the big stadiums. Maybe one day we'll be in one, but that's, that's not really a big thing in my heart. My heart is to get out there 
And there were little villages of 50 and 100 and 200 that never heard the name of Jesus one time and tell them about good Jesus. That's my heart. And, but I had to collect funds to do that. And so when you support this right here, you're supporting everything we're doing. Amen. When you're supporting the local house of River Life, you're supporting everything we're doing worldwide because it's not just on this property of over 12 acres. It's worldwide. And what helps me do that is what happened here. Praise God. We have our orphans. Most of our orphan support comes in from outside. And these some more of that right now. And so, Proverbs 4, 7, and 8. Wisdom is a principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. Just what I said a while ago. Wisdom will bring, promote you and bring you honor. Praise God. Amen. Think about it. Proverbs 13, 17 and 18, a wicked messenger falls into trouble, but a faithful ambassador brings health. Poverty and shame will come to him who disdains correction, but he who regards and rebuke will be honored. That's very, very powerful. And it talks about what will come to those that disdain correction. And a lot of times they say, well, I know this person, they're a businessman, they made big money. But think about a moment. The Bible tells us in His Word that He will give us wealth and add no sorrow to it. Okay? I don't think you have to look too hard in Hollywood to find multi-millionaires or maybe billionaires that have a lot of sorrow. Their families are wrecked. They've had 10, 12 wives, whatever. I don't know why they call them wives anymore. You know what I mean? But they're not happy. Their children have problems. Their families have problems. Some of their children are in jail. They're not happy. They're sorrow with that. But the thing is, when God blesses us, I'm not saying a sinner does not have funds. There's people out of their ability to make money. I know some very wealthy people that's not serving God. If they're, if, if they're billionaires. But they were brought to total, being totally broke right now today, within a year, they'd be wealthy again. Because they, 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 they know how to make money. But it's not the anointing of God. And these people do have a lot of sorrow in their life. So I want to be blessed. I want to be able to fly anywhere I need to go. But I don't want the sorrow. Amen. 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 I want it God's way. I yeah. want it with God's yeah. blessing. And plus, I plan on going to heaven. A lot of the people, they better enjoy it now. It's the best it's going to be. Yeah. Mm. It, it's very, very sad. Because the Word of God is true. You know, let every man be a liar, but His Word's true. So I used that on me. I said, Lord, Your Word is true. You know, if I'm not lined up on it, He's not going to change His Word. Amen. You know, I'm going to have to, I'm going to, have to do something. Proverbs 22, 3 through 5. A prudent man foresees evil and hides himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. <laughs> that a preacher would. <laughs> By humility and, and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Thorns and snares are in the way of the perverse. He who guards his soul will be far from them. The so verse 4 says, By humility and fear. Of the Lord. That's respect and reverence of God, not shaking and quaking. But humility realizing that if God doesn't do it, I can't do it. Amen. Jesus called Moses to make his man the Bible also. I've heard people preach that Moses said himself, so he wrote it. No. Jesus repeated it too. Read the book. Okay? Sometimes people want to say things to entertain the crowd and find out what makes the crowd happy. So they'll give me money. Mm -hmm. Around here we're just going to preach the word anyway. Jesus called Moses to make his man in the Bible. Moses the one drew the line in the sand. So everybody following court, his bunch get on this side. One's following me and God get on this side. God opened the ground and swallows them. 
But he was called the meekest man in the Bible because when Moses came against something he couldn't handle, he fell on his face before God. He realized himself he can't do it. Man, I've done plenty of that around here. See, if people see the pulpit side of the ministry. Most people don't see the rest of the week side. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you, you could dig every tear out of that sanctuary in there that I've shed, my wife shed over the years, you'd, you'd have like another pond. I don't know how many it would add up to just, you know, thinking. Okay, Job 29, verse 7 through 11. When I went out to the gate by the city, when I took my seat in the open square, and I watched his clothes, the young man, men saw me and hid. And the aged men arose and stood. He talked about the honor they had for him. The princes refrained from talking and put their hand on their mouth. The voice of nobles were hushed and their tongues stuck to the roof of their mouth. When the ear heard, then it blessed me. And when the eyes saw, then it approved me. Job is talking about the honor that he had before all the other things came upon him. And thank God he got a double portion. Two wives. <laughs> no <I'm> kidding. <laughs> but anyway, but but he talked about, he said, man, you know, the people honor me so much that the young man went and hid his trouble. I should be in his presence. The old man, they stood and respected him. He's talking about the honor they showed him. You know, the military has a lot of honor in it. Or movements are supposed to be on because of honor and respect. And uh, it's, it's kind of interesting. I, I have found that over the years, in most cases, not every case, but in most cases, someone who's been in the military has a discipline about them serving God that other people don't have. Now, not everybody. I've known some loose cannons out of the military. You know, many of my brothers out of the Vietnam War, you know, uh, as they say in Vietnamese, we were dialed out. I mean, it's crazy in the head. But thank God for the blood. Amen. I once Amen. was lost in sin. Amen. Amen. Let me read one more here. John 5, 43, 44. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, him will you receive. How can you believe who receive honor from one another and do not seek the honor that comes from only God? And so he said, I come in my Father's name. You don't receive me. In other words, you don't honor me. You don't honor me. And, and so we have to realize that, that we need to honor God. And in just a moment, we're going to talk in the next segment on how do we honor God. And, and if you don't mind, as we go ahead, we'll, we'll stop this session. We'll start the next session. And uh, 